History of Beer, Wikipedia Audio Beer is one of the oldest beverages humans have produced, dating back to at least the 5th millennium BC in Iran, and was recorded in the written history of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia and spread throughout the world. As almost any cereal containing certain sugars can undergo spontaneous fermentation due to wild yeasts in the air, it is possible that beer-like beverages were independently developed throughout the world soon after a tribe or culture had domesticated cereal. Chemical tests of ancient pottery jars reveal that beer was produced as far back as about 7,000 years ago in what is today Iran. This discovery reveals one of the earliest known uses of fermentation and is the earliest evidence of brewing to date. In Mesopotamia, the oldest evidence of beer is believed to be a 6,000-year-old Sumerian tablet depicting people drinking a beverage through reed straws from a communal bowl. A 3,900-year-old Sumerian poem honoring Ninkasi, the patron goddess of brewing, contains the oldest surviving beer recipe, describing the production of beer from barley via bread. In China, residue on pottery dating from between 5,400 and 4,900 years ago shows beer was brewed using barley and other grains. The invention of bread and beer has been argued to be responsible for humanity's ability to develop technology and build civilization. The earliest chemically confirmed barley beer to date was discovered at Gaudenteep in the central Zagros Mountains of Iran, where fragments of a jug, from between 5,400 and 5,000 years ago was found to be coated with beer stone, a byproduct of the brewing process. Early Beers Beer may have been known in Neolithic Europe as far back as 5,000 years ago and was mainly brewed on a domestic scale. Beer produced before the Industrial Revolution continued to be made and sold on a domestic scale, although by the 7th century AD beer was also being produced and sold by European monasteries. During the Industrial Revolution, the production of beer moved from artisanal manufacture to industrial manufacture and domestic manufacture ceased to be significant by the end of the 19th century. The development of hydrometers and thermometers changed brewing by allowing the brewer more control of the process, and greater knowledge of the results. Today, the brewing industry is a global business, consisting of several dominant multinational companies and many thousands of smaller producers ranging from brew pubs to regional breweries. More than 133 billion liters are sold per year producing total global revenues of $294.5 billion in 2006. As almost any cereal containing certain sugars can undergo spontaneous fermentation due to wild yeasts in the air, it is possible that beer-like beverages were independently developed throughout the world soon after a tribe or culture had domesticated cereal. Chemical tests of ancient pottery jars reveal that beer was produced about 3,500 BC in what is today Iran and was one of the first known biological engineering tasks where the biological process of fermentation is used. Also, archaeological findings show that Chinese villagers were brewing fermented alcoholic drinks as far back as 7000 BC on small and individual scale, with the production process and methods similar to that of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. In Mesopotamia, Early evidence of beer is a 3,900-year-old Sumerian poem honoring Ninkasi, the patron goddess of brewing, which contains the oldest surviving beer recipe, describing the production of beer from barley via bread. Approximately 5,000 years ago, workers in the city of Uruk were paid by their employers in beer. Ninkasi you are the one who pours out the filtered beer of the collector vat. It is the onrush of Tigris and Euphrates. 
Beer is also mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh, in which the wild man in Kiju is given beer to drink. He ate until he was full, drank seven pitchers of beer, his heart grew light, his face glowed and he sang out with joy. Confirmed written evidence of ancient beer production in Armenia can be obtained from Xenophon in his work Anabasis when he was in one of the ancient Armenian villages in which he wrote. Medieval Europe There were stores within of wheat and barley and vegetables, and wine made from barley in great big bowls, the grains of barley malt lay floating in the beverage up to the lip of the vessel, and reeds lay in them, some longer some shorter, without joints, when you were thirsty you must take one of these into your mouth, and suck. The beverage without admixture of water was very strong, and of a delicious flavor to certain palates, but the taste must be acquired. Beer became vital to all the grain-growing civilizations of Eurasian and North African antiquity including Egypt so much so that in 1868 James Death put forward a theory in the beer of the Bible that the manna from heaven that God gave the Israelites was a bread-based, porridge-like beer called wuza. These beers were often thick, more of a gruel than a beverage, and drinking straws were used by the Sumerians to avoid the bitter solids left over from fermentation. Though beer was drunk in ancient Rome, it was replaced in popularity by wine. Tacitus wrote disparagingly of the beer brewed by the Germanic peoples of his day. Thracians were also known to consume beer made from rye, even since the 5th century BC, as the ancient Greek logographer Hellenicus of Lesbos says. Their name for beer was brutos, or britos. The Romans called their brew Cerevisia, from the Celtic word for it. Beer was apparently enjoyed by some Roman legionaries. For instance, among the Vindolanda tablets, the cavalry Decurian Masculus wrote a letter to Prefect Flavius Cerealis inquiring about the exact instructions for his men for the following day. This included a polite request for beer to be sent to the garrison. Ancient Nubians had used beer as an antibiotic medicine. In ancient Mesopotamia, clay tablets indicate that the majority of brewers were probably women, and that brewing was a fairly well-respected occupation during the time, being the only profession in Mesopotamia which derived social sanction and divine protection from female deities slash goddesses, specifically, Ninkesai who covered the production of beer, Cirrus, who was used in a metonymic way to refer to beer, and Siduri, who covered the enjoyment of beer. Mesopotamian brewing appears to have incorporated the usage of a twice-baked barley bread called bapir, which was exclusively used for brewing beer. It was discovered early that reusing the same container for fermenting the mash would produce more reliable results. Brewers on the move carried their tubs with them. The Ebla tablets, discovered in 1974 in Ebla, Syria, show that beer was produced in the city in 2500 BC. Early traces of beer and the brewing process have been found in ancient Babylonia as well. At the time, brewers were women as well, but also priestesses. Some types of beers were used especially in religious ceremonies. In 2100 BC, the Babylonian king Hammurabi included regulations governing tavern keepers in his law code for the kingdom. Beer was part of the daily diet of Egyptian pharaohs over 5,000 years ago. Then, it was made from baked barley bread, and was also used in religious practices. During the building of the Great Pyramids in Giza, Egypt, each worker got a daily ration of 4 to 5 liters of beer, which served as both nutrition and refreshment that was crucial to the pyramid's construction. Early Modern Europe Asia 
The Greek writer Sophocles discussed the concept of moderation when it came to consuming beer in Greek culture, and believed that the best diet for Greeks consisted of bread, meats, various types of vegetables, and beer, or zeta theta omicron as they called it. The ancient Greeks also made barley wine mentioned by Greek historian Polybius in his work The Histories, where he states that Phaeacians kept barley wine in silver and golden craters. The Industrial Revolution Modern Beer Mythology Etymology In Europe during the Middle Ages, a brewer's guild might adopt a patron saint of brewing. Arnulf of Metz and Arnulf of Odenburg were recognized by some French and Flemish brewers. Belgian brewers, too, venerated Arnulf of Odenburg, who is also recognized as the patron saint of hop pickers. Christian monks built breweries, to provide food, drink, and shelter to travelers and pilgrims. Charlemagne, Frankish king and ruler of the Holy Roman Empire during the 8th century, considered beer to be an important part of living, and is often thought to have trained some brewers himself. Beer was one of the most common drinks during the Middle Ages. It was consumed daily by all social classes in the northern and eastern parts of Europe where grape cultivation was difficult or impossible. Though wine of varying qualities was the most common drink in the South, beer was still popular among the lower classes. The idea that beer was consumed more commonly than water during medieval times is a myth. Water was cheaper than beer, and towns villages were built close to sources of fresh water such as rivers, springs, and wells to facilitate easy access to the resource. Though probably one of the most popular drinks in Europe, beer was disdained by science as being unhealthy, mostly because ancient Greek and more contemporary Arab physicians had little or no experience with the drink. In 1256, the Aldo Brandino of Siena described the nature of beer in the following way. The use of hops in beer was written of in 822 by a Carolingian abbot. Flavoring beer with hops was known at least since the 9th century, but was only gradually adopted because of difficulties in establishing the right proportions of ingredients. Before that, grut, a mix of various herbs, had been used, but did not have the same preserving properties as hops. Beer flavored without it was often spoiled soon after preparation and could not be exported. The only other alternative was to increase the alcohol content, which was rather expensive. Hopped beer was perfected in the medieval towns of Bohemia by the 13th century. German towns pioneered a new scale of operation with standardized barrel sizes that allowed for large-scale export. Previously beer had been brewed at home, but the production was now successfully replaced by medium-sized operations of about 8 to 10 people. This type of production spread to Holland in the 14th century and later to Flanders and Brabant, and reached England by the late 15th century. English ale and beer brewing were carried out separately, no brewer being allowed to produce both. The Brewers Company of London stated no hops, herbs, or other like thing be put into any ale or liquor whereof ale shall be made but only liquor, malt, and yeast. This comment is sometimes misquoted as a prohibition on hopped beer. However, hopped beer was opposed by some, e.g. Ale is made of malty and water and they the which do put any other thing to ale than is rearst, except yest, barm, or God's good, doth sophisticate their ale. Ale for an English he man is a natural drinky. Ale must how these properties, it must be fresh he and clear, it must not be ropey, nor smoky, nor it must how no weft nor tail. 
Ale shoulder not be drunk ki vinder dot v. Days old. Barley malty makes better ale than it and malty or any other corn doth. Beer is made of malty, of hops, and water, it is a natural drink for a dosh man, and now of late days it is mosh feast in English and to the detriment of many in he men, for the drink is a cold a drink. Yet it doth make a man fat, and doth inflate the belly, as it doth appara by the dosh menis faces and bellies. In Europe, beer brewing largely remained a home activity in medieval times. By the 14th and 15th centuries, beer making was gradually changing from a family oriented activity to an artisan one, with pubs and monasteries brewing their own beer for mass consumption. In the late Middle Ages, the brewing industry in Northern Europe changed from a small-scale domestic industry to a large-scale export industry. The key innovation was the introduction of hops, which began in Northern Germany in the 13th century. Hops sharply improved both the brewing process and the quality of beer. Other innovations from German lands involved larger kettle sizes and more frequent brewing. Consumption went up, while brewing became more concentrated because it was a capital-intensive industry. Thus in Hamburg per capita consumption increased from an average of 300 liters per year in the 15th century to about 700 in the 17th century. The use of hops spread to the Netherlands and then to England. In 15th century England, an unhopped beer would have been known as an ale, while the use of hops would make it a beer. Hopped beer was imported to England from the Netherlands as early as 1400 in Winchester, and hops were being planted on the island by 1428. The popularity of hops was at first mixed the Brewers' Company of London went so far as to state no hops, herbs, or other like thing be put into any ale or liquor whereof ale shall be made but only liquor, malt, and yeast. However, by the 16th century, ale had come to refer to any strong beer, and all ales and beers were hopped, giving rise to the verse noted by the antiquary John Aubrey. Bibliography Greeks, heresy, turkey cocks, and beer Came into England all in a year. The year, according to Aubrey, being the 15th of Henry VIII. In 1516, William IV, Duke of Bavaria, adopted the Reinheitsgebot, perhaps the oldest food regulation still in use through the 20th century. The Gabot ordered that the ingredients of beer be restricted to water, barley, and hops. Yeast was added to the list after Louis Pasteur's discovery in 1857. The Bavarian law was applied throughout Germany as part of the 1871 German unification as the German Empire under Otto von Bismarck, and has since been updated to reflect modern trends in beer brewing. To this day, the Gabot is considered a mark of purity in beers, although this is controversial. Most beers until relatively recent times were top fermented. Bottom fermented beers were discovered by accident in the 16th century after beer was stored in cool caverns for long periods, they have since largely outpaced top fermented beers in terms of volume. For further discussion of bottom fermented beers, see Pilsner and Lager. There is prehistoric evidence that shows brewing began around 5400 BC in Sumer. However, as with the history of corn whiskey, the production of other alcoholic beverages is often seen as a way to preserve excess grain, rather than an occupation in and of itself. Documented evidence and recently excavated tombs indicate that the Chinese brewed alcoholic beverages from both malted grain and grain converted by mold from prehistoric times, 
but that the malt conversion process was largely considered inefficient in comparison with the use of molds specially cultivated on rice carrier in Chinese and koji in Japanese to convert cooked rice into fermentable sugars, both in the amount of resulting fermentable sugars and the residual by-products, as a cooking ingredient in many dishes, frequently as an ingredient to sauces where Western dishes would use wine because the rice undergoes starch conversion after being hulled and cooked, rather than whole and in husks like barley malt. Furthermore, the hop plant being unknown in East Asia, malt-based alcoholic beverages did not preserve well over time, and the use of malt in the production of alcoholic beverages gradually fell out of favor in China until disappearing from Chinese history by the end of the Tang Dynasty. The use of rice became dominant, such that wines from fruits of any type were historically all but unknown except as imports in China. The production of alcoholic beverage from cooked rice converted by microbes continues to this day, and some classify the different varieties of Chinese and Japanese sake as beer since they are made from converted starch rather than fruit sugars. However, this is a debatable point and such beverages are generally referred to as rice wine or sake which is really the generic Chinese and Japanese word for all alcoholic beverages. Some Pacific Island cultures ferment starch that has been converted to fermentable sugars by human saliva, similar to the chicha of South America. This practice is also used by many other tribes around the world who either chew the grain and then spit it into the fermentation vessel or spit into a fermentation vessel containing cooked grain, which is then sealed up for the fermentation. Enzymes in the spittle convert the starch into fermentable sugars, which are fermented by wild yeast. Whether or not the resulting product can be called beer is sometimes disputed, since some Taiwanese tribes have taken the process a step further by distilling the resulting alcoholic beverage, resulting in a clear liquor. However, as none of the Taiwanese tribes are known to have developed systems of writing, there is no way to document how far back this practice goes, or if the technique was brought from mainland China by Han Chinese immigrants. Judging by the fact that this technique is usually found in tribes using millet as the ingredient, the latter seems much more likely. Asia's first brewery was incorporated in 1855 by Edward Dyer at Kaisali in the Himalayan Mountains in India under the name Dyer Breweries. The company still exists and is known as Mohan Meekin today comprising a large group of companies across many industries. Following significant improvements in the efficiency of the steam engine in 1765, industrialization of beer became a reality. Further innovations in the brewing process came about with the introduction of the thermometer in 1760 and hydrometer in 1770 which allowed brewers to increase efficiency and attenuation. Prior to the late 18th century, malt was primarily dried over fires made from wood, charcoal, or straw, and after 1600, from coke. In general, none of these early malts would have been well shielded from the smoke involved in the killing process, and consequently, early beers would have had a smoky component to their flavors, evidence indicates that maltsters and brewers constantly tried to minimize the smokiness of the finished beer. Writers of the period describe the distinctive taste derived from wood-smoked malts, and the almost universal revulsion it engendered. The smoked beers and ales of the West Country were famous for being undrinkable locals and the desperate accepted. This is from Directions for Brewing Malt Liquors. In most parts of the West, their malt is so stenched with the smoke of the wood, with which tis dried, that no stranger can endure it, though the inhabitants, 
who are familiarized to it, can swallow it as the Hollanders do their thick black beer brewed with buckwheat. An even earlier reference to such malt was recorded by William Harrison, in his Description of England, 1577. In some places it is dried at leisure with wood alone, or straw alone, in other with wood and straw together, but, of all, the straw dried is the most excellent. For the wood dried malt, when it is brewed, beside that the drink is higher of colour, it doth hurt and annoy the head of him that is not used thereto, because of the smoke. Such also as use both indifferently do bark, cleave, and dry their wood in an oven, thereby to remove all moisture that should procure the fume. London and country brewer specified the varieties of brown malt popular in the city. Brown malts are dried with straw, wood, and fern, etc. The straw dried is the best, but the wood sort has a most unnatural taste, that few can bear with, but the necessitous, and those that are accustomed to its strong smoky tang, yet it is much used in some of the western parts of England, and many thousand quarters of this malt has been formerly used in London for brewing the butt going beers with, and that because it sold for two shillings per quarter cheaper than straw-dried malt, nor was this quality of the wood-dried malt much regarded by some of its brewers, for that its ill taste is lost in nine or twelve months, by the age of the beer, and the strength of the great quantity of hops that were used in its preservation. The hydrometer transformed how beer was brewed. Before its introduction beers were brewed from a single malt, brown beers from brown malt, amber beers from amber malt, pale beers from pale malt. Using the hydrometer, Brewers could calculate the yield from different malts. They observed that pale malt, though more expensive, yielded far more fermentable material than cheaper malts. For example, brown malt gave 54 pounds of extract per quarter, whilst pale malt gave 80 pounds. Once this was known, Brewers switched to using mostly pale malt for all beers supplemented with a small quantity of highly colored malt to achieve the correct color for darker beers. The invention of the drum roaster in 1817 by Daniel Wheeler allowed for the creation of very dark, roasted malts, contributing to the flavor of porters and stouts. Its development was prompted by a British law of 1816 forbidding the use of any ingredients other than malt and hops. Porter brewers, employing a predominantly pale malt grist, urgently needed a legal colorant. Wheeler's patent malt was the solution. Louis Pasteur S. 1857 discovery of yeast's role in fermentation led to brewers developing methods to prevent the souring of beer by undesirable microorganisms. Many European nations have unbroken brewing traditions dating back to the earliest historical records. Beer is an especially important drink in countries such as Belgium, Germany, Austria, Ireland, UK, France, the Scandinavian countries, Poland, the Czech Republic, Spain, and others having strong and unique brewing traditions with their own history, characteristic brewing methods, and styles of beer. Unlike in many parts of the world, there is a significant market in Europe for beer containing live yeast. These unfiltered, Unpasteurized brews are more challenging to handle than the commonly sold dead beers, live beer quality can suffer with poor care, but many people prefer its taste. While beer is usually matured for relatively short times compared to wine, some of the stronger so-called real ales have been found to develop character and flavor over the course of as much as several decades. In some parts of the world, 
breweries that had begun as a family business by Germans or other European émigrés grew into large companies, often passing into hands with more concern for profits than traditions of quality, resulting in a degradation of the product. In 1953, New Zealander Morton W. Kautz developed the technique of continuous fermentation. Kautz patented his process, which involves beer flowing through sealed tanks, fermenting under pressure, and never coming into contact with the atmosphere, even when bottled. His process was introduced in the US and UK, but is now used for commercial beer production only in New Zealand. In some sectors brewers are reluctant to embrace new technology for fear of losing the traditional characteristics of their beer. For example, Marston's Brewery in Burton-on-Trent still uses open wooden Burton Union sets for fermentation in order to maintain the quality and flavor of its beers, while Belgium's Lambic brewers go so far as to expose their brews to outside air in order to pick up the natural wild yeasts which ferment the wort. Traditional brewing techniques protect the beer from oxidation by maintaining a carbon dioxide blanket over the wort as it ferments into beer. Modern breweries now brew many types of beer ranging from ancient styles such as the spontaneously fermented lambics of Belgium, the lagers, dark beers, wheat beers, and more of Germany, the UK's stouts, milds, pale ales, bitters, golden ale and new modern American creations such as chili beer, cream ale, and double India pale ales. Today, the brewing industry is a huge global business consisting of several multinational companies, and many thousands of smaller producers ranging from brew pubs to regional breweries. Advances in refrigeration, international and transcontinental shipping, marketing, and commerce have resulted in an international marketplace, where the consumer has literally hundreds of choices between various styles of local, regional, national, and foreign beers. Prior to Prohibition, there were thousands of breweries in the United States, mostly brewing heavier beers than modern U.S. beer drinkers are used to. Beginning in 1920, most of these breweries went out of business, although some converted to soft drinks and other businesses. Bootlegged beer was often watered down to increase profits, beginning a trend, still ongoing today of the American markets heavily advertising the weaker beers and keeping them popular. Consolidation of breweries and the application of industrial quality control standards have led to the mass production and the mass marketing of huge quantities of light lagers. Advertising became supreme, and bigger companies fared better in that market. The decades after World War II saw a huge consolidation of the American brewing industry, brewing companies would buy their rivals solely for their customers and distribution systems, shutting down their brewing operations. Breweries and imports have become more abundant since the mid-1980s, the number of breweries has been claimed as being either over 1,500 in 2007 or over 1,400 in 2010, depending on the source. As of June 2013, the Brewers Association reports the total number of currently operating U.S. breweries to be 2,538 with only 55 of those being non-craft breweries. The Finnish epic Kalevala, collected in written form in the 19th century but based on oral traditions many centuries old, devotes more lines to the origin of beer and brewing than it does to the origin of mankind. The mythical Flemish king Gambrinus, is sometimes credited with the invention of beer. According to Czech legend, deity Radegast, god of hospitality, invented beer. Ningkesai was the patron goddess of brewing in ancient Sumer. In Egyptian mythology, 
the immense bloodlust of the fierce lioness goddess Sikamet was only sated after she was tricked into consuming an extremely large amount of red-coloured beer, she became so drunk that she gave up slaughter altogether and became docile. In Norse mythology the sea god Agir, his wife Ran, and their nine daughters, brewed ale for the gods. In the Lokasena, it is told that Agir would host a party where all the gods would drink the beer he brewed for them. He made this in a giant kettle that Thor had brought. The cups in Agir's hall were always full, magically refilling themselves when emptied. Agir had two servants in his hall to assist him, Elder and Femei Feng. In Nart sagas, Sadaniya, Adinghi, Asishan, the mother of the Narts, a fertility figure and matriarch, invented beer. Recent Irish mythology attributes the invention of beer to fabled Irishman Charlie Mops. The word beer comes from Old Germanic languages, and is with variations used in Continental Germanic languages, beer in German and Dutch, but not in Nordic languages. The word was imported into the British Isles by tribes such as the Saxons. It is disputed where the word originally comes from. Many other languages have borrowed the Dutch-German word, such as French beer, Italian bera, Romanian bear and Turkish bira. The Nordic languages have ol l, related to the English word ale. Spanish, Portuguese, and Catalan have words that evolved from Latin servizia, originally of Celtic origin. Slavic languages use pivo with small variations, based on a pre-Slavic word meaning beverage and derived from the verb meaning to drink. Chuvash pora its our Turkic counterpart, which may ultimately be the source of the Germanic beer word.